Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate, and we are working on gra Graphic 45, Let's Get Artsy, and this is page one, page one. So this is from the Patterns and Solids, I've already inked it, and I'm going to put this down as my base for page one. Oh, what a mess, I don't know what's going on with my tip, it might just be time to get a new one, it keeps doing that. Oh, I know why, I had it stored on its side, eh? I had left it overnight in my uh, scrap bag. That's what happened. So. Okay. So this is a pocket page, meaning I used two sheets of paper. Um, eight and a half by ten. Eight and a half by ten. I scored a half inch on the eight and a half inch side and then I put them together to create a pocket page. If you're not familiar with this construction, um, go back to the playlist and the second um, a video is the basic build which will show you how to build the pocket page, the spine and all the, the, all the elements that are sort of standard across albums and then the ones um, that are by page is just where we're adding the interactive elements. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add these two cards. And these are eight and a half by six and one eighth. So it's uh, eight and a half inches by six and one eighth. You're going to score it in half. And I just took one continuous piece. We're going to split these apart a little bit. Yeah, it's going to go like so. Obviously, that image is from the collection pack. It's very easy to spot those, and it's from the 12 by 12. Um, when, uh, when you're doing a graphic album, because their patterns and solids are very, very easy to pick out, like this one. It's just... Um, shades of one particular color on both sides and that's clearly an image i'm going to get a ruler to help me place this one's not thick enough here's a nice big fat one place this one so i'm going to eyeball it from left to right but i'm going to use this ruler to help me get it where I want it relative to this piece. And then I'll tell you what that is. It looks like about a quarter of an inch. Tell you what that distance is. It's a quarter of an inch, just that's what the blue is. So if you actually go from the black line to the score line here, it is how many sixteenths? One, two, three, four, five sixteenths. So, there you go. And I'm doing uh, 16th inch borders on everything. Okay, so these both open. So that looks nice. We are going to use a magnet to keep this all closed. So that's, I'm going to share with you this next piece, which is going to be adhered to this flap. It's going to reach over and hold this all down with a magnet. So you need... Um, you need a strip that is one and three quarter inches by six and three quarters. One and three quarter by six and three quarters. Then you're going to score score at three quarters of an inch. And it's because I want just a little bit more um, at, for the attached tab. Normally I only do a, a half inch, um, 
but do three quarters of an inch. Score it. Then I used a um, a stub uh, punch to cut out the edges. Now we've got two colors. This is going to be the top. Or two patterns. Uh, this is from the uh, 12 by 12 collection pack. And the blue one, which is going to be the flip side, is from the Patterns and Solids. Okay. Now I want it to be uh, lay right on top just like this. So it's going to be roughly centered. So let me find the center of this real quick. This is just to help me locate the center between these two cards. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is apply some glue. You can use tape here too. And then we're going to use that little dot to help us center this. Okay, that is that looks good. So now we're going to open it up and we're going to lay in uh, the designer paper for this side. We put a magnet here so I wouldn't forget. So go ahead and put a magnet on the end here. And I think yeah, I, should, I did this backwards. Shoot. I think I'm going to flip it this way so it's solid. This would also give you, because I did three quarters of an inch, it makes it very easy to make this little piece too. So that it's not just a black um, hinge attaching it. You can put a little decoration on it. Kind of made a little bit of a mess, so let me take off some of that glue. It's kind of easy to take off when it's still damp. And then whatever I don't get off, you can come back and clean it up with um, one of these, which kind of picks up the goo. I'm not going to do that right now because it's not completely dry. Okay, so we can go ahead and Take that off. Go ahead. I think it fits one way better than the other. Oops. This has all been uh, inked using chocolate malt. Okay, now we're ready to put a magnet. It's going to wind up being here because I already glued this down and I wasn't thinking. So um, if you haven't glued this image down yet, oh, there's tape on here. Then um, I think it's double-sided temporary tape. Um, then put it directly under this, but because I jumped and didn't do that it needs to go like so so now I'm going to leverage it the magnet's strong enough that it, it went and found the location which is right there I'm going to put some tape over it 
We're going to test it again. Yep. So that's how everything is going to stay closed. Okay. It's going to burnish that into, into place. Okay, now for the inside, I'm doing something different. I don't usually do this. But I cut out two frames. And they're kind of a pain because I don't have a die cut for this. I just ordered one, but I don't have one right now. So you can do two things. You can either do what I did, one of two things, and uh, cut these out by hand. Or, and they don't have to be the specific size, right? Or you can, um, if you've got a die cut, use your die cut machine and cut them out. And then lastly, if you don't want to bother with either of those, just make these photo mats. Just make it a mounted on black and just make a photo mount so it would just be solid blue here and solid orange there. Hopefully that makes sense. So these are going to go, this is going to go in here staggered slightly and then this one is going to go here now the difference between the two frames this one's a little bit bigger but you can see it makes it interesting looking this is just a frame and it's just um, here to provide some contrast and interest this one is actually a pocket so you can slide something into it so what I want when it's empty is to see the back of the cards and then if I've got a photo in there you know, that would be the other thing I'd look at. So either way, it's going to be interesting whether there's a photo in it or not. And then, so I'm going to go ahead and put these in. First, I've got to add these papers. And once I do, I'll go. I'll come back to this and show you how I did these by hand. Um, and then I'll... Actually, is this the one I'm going to use? No, it's not. It's bigger. Um, I'll show you how I made these and then how I... Um, cut the frames down which is like I said it's kind of a pain but it makes a very interesting layout so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down so I don't and I learned a few things about sort of making it easier on yourself um, whoop This is another one of those examples of where it's going to go on one way better than the other, and I think I. I think my glue is drying too fast. I'll set these two aside. This is the one that's gonna that's got the pocket, and this one's just a flat mat, and I'm just using it to create some architectural interest here. Okay, now I think I've got half of this already trimmed out, but let me. This is a mess. Definitely taking a break after this page and cleaning this up. I guess I didn't have the lid screwed all the way on when I put it in my scrap bag. Okay, let's move this back down. All right, so this is from the same sheet, so I'm just going to go ahead and leverage these inside. They're pretty much the size I need. Actually, it needs to be turned down just a little bit. So let's do that real quick. I was looking for that tape earlier. I think it's the right height. Yeah. So when you are when you have a continuous pattern, make sure you're cutting from the outsides and not the, the center line so it, you still have that flow. Uh, looks good. Let's get it inked and laid down. And 
And you know what I just realized? I don't want my magnet there. I want it here. So it doesn't have so many pieces of paper through it. But that's going to be easy to locate. I'll show you. This is really an interesting collection. It's quite a departure for graphic. I like it. Now I put it here, right, and I really want it here so that I don't have a piece of paper here and here and here that it has to travel through. So that's going to be easy enough. Um, I'll remove that, but first I'm going to use it to help me locate a magnet on this side. Perfect. This one will need to come up. Can you believe it's the end of the year? I don't know where time goes. There we go. This can be reused later. Just set that there. Okay, this is all good. Let's get this down. I think it needs to be trimmed a little too. Yeah. Okay, now I trimmed it off this side. Hope everybody's doing well. Getting ready for Christmas. Gorgeous. So the next thing I want to do is I want to lay these down um, because I want to see what they look like before I add the um, patterns on this side. So this is the one that actually has a pocket so it has to be applied last. This will be applied first and so I think I think I like that. So it looks like I'm coming down mm, three eighths of an inch, so just over a quarter. And again, this is just a flat mat, and the rectangle is just to add some interest to the page. You you don't you can put something in this if you want, in which case you'd really want to glue down three of the four sides, or you can just leave it as you know an interesting point. But and then the other thing you can do is. Um, you just put a photo right over it, right? I think this is four by six. Yeah, this is four by six. So you could just lay a photo here, trim it down a little bit, and then you'd wind up with your blue frame. Now this I'm going to apply. So I'm kind of looking for... I don't know how that happened, but I know how to fix it. Um, the, kind of the same distance here and here and up and down. So, and I'm not measuring it, I'm just winging it. That looks about right. Now I'm going to glue this whole thing down because it's a pocket, right? So I don't have to worry about gluing it closed. Thank you. 
Okay, does not look interesting. I like it. So now that we've got these two pieces in, we've got some color here. We can start to think about what we want on the last two flaps. And then at the very end, I'm going to show you how I made these frames. If you decide you want to do the frames, um, if you don't have dies. And basically, I think I've got, they're two different sizes, four by six, and this is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. It's just a little bit bigger. Okay. I made this as an insert. It is folded like a card. It's four by six. It's going to fit in here. So you could have a photo here, 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 and here. What's this? Oh, something stuck to it. I don't know what. I'm going to leave that alone. I don't want to tear it. So this will fit into the pocket like so. Okay, there we go. Now, of course, that will be a photo or should be a photo, so it's not going to be that much orange. Let's see what to do on the side. So I'm going to That's pulling this pattern back in. I'm not crazy about that. I don't know that I like this. I don't know. What do you guys think? Going back and forth. Let me I actually have a new I have an idea. We're gonna do something a little bit unique. We're only dealing with one magnet, which is kind of nice to hold everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a panel for here and a panel for here. One for One's going to be blue and one's going to be orange. So let's see. It's not directional, so we'll go this way so I can save most of the rest of the sheet. So that's one. have left and right so I'm not I'm one of the options is to leave it as is right I and mean, this is kind of staggered and this is kind of staggered the other option would be to cut a diagonal and cut a diagonal and then swap so that you have basically something that looks like this that's not the right print, but you get the, the drift. So you would have, you'd have orange, and then you'd have some part of it be this blue. So as you can see, we've got these very strong ge geometric shapes, the rectangles. Um, so triangle's a very strong geometric shape too, So, but is it too much is what I'm kind of thinking about. Um, So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be brave. <laughs> I'm going to do this, and we'll see how it turns out. 
don't, <laughs> but they both have to be cut the same. So you can use the, the pieces interchangeably. And if I really, really don't like it, I'm going to tape them back together and um, hide the cut mark. And I'll show you how to do that if we, if that's what we just need to do. So I'm going to think about this for a second, but I think I'm going to go corner to corner. I did it. <laughs> so, and one of the reasons this works so well is because neither one of these patterns is um, directional. So if it was directional, it would be problematic. So we, we have lots of options, right? We can do orange on the inside. I kind of like that this is making... I gotta think a little bit. It looks a little busy, but I think when you put like a photo here, it's gonna make a very interesting frame. So I'm I'm liking it. I really am. And I just realized I cut them wrong. Um, I should have put them face to face and then that way I could have had the orange triangles um, and the blue, the blue in here and the orange out here. So I had stacked them like this. So if you're going to do this technique, um, pick up the pieces and then put them together and then cut them. Don't stack them put them together like uh, pages. I'm not going to redo it. I'm going to stick with what I have. I do like the, I like the outcome. I think it's interesting. And I think that's the arrangement I'm going to go with. So partly, part of the reason I like this is because it's pulling this orange as far away from here as possible the bulk of the orange. Okay, now the, the last question is, do we want to have this color blocked? And yes, I do. So I am going to go ahead and ink. Um, it needs to be trimmed down a little. In order to have um, room for a color block, I'm going to have to trim it just a little bit more. So what I'm thinking about how you can trim this. So I trimmed these down to be an eighth inch shorter and narrower than the black panel. And what I would recommend is that's an eighth. So that's two sixteenths, three sixteenths of an inch. And then, um, if you made it 3 16th inch shorter in width and height, um, you won't have to come back and double trim this for the color block. Uh, so the way I'm going to work around it is I'm going to lay one of the pieces in, get it glued down, and then I'm going to mark the, uh, the second one to trim. So you can choose whether you want that to be the blue or the black. I'm going to go ahead and set my, uh, not blue, not black, set my orange ones and then trim the blue ones, which... It's going to be a sixteenth of an inch, so it's not a lot. It won't. It's not going to be obvious that they are. This ruler's in my way. That they are um, different sizes. It's going to be very insignificant. Okay, after this, we'll go back to the front and then that tab that's keeping everything closed, we're going to embellish that. Okay, 
Okay, so now I'm going to put the blue one in where it belongs. So rather than cut the diagonal, I'm going to shave off the edges. So I cut this side, I'm trying to see if I'm actually in the score line. I'm not. So now I'm going to use my pencil to mark the top. to be a little bit more. Okay, I think we're good. Go ahead and knock that white core off. We're distressed to your heart's content. Make sure you get your corners down good. Whenever you have a point that sharp, um, there's some risk of it um, poking up. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty darn good. And I think let's do five and three quarters. So this would be a three and three quarters by five and three quarter. It just makes it an interesting frame. Something smaller would eat, would look even better, I think. Okay. So I'm gonna ink this light down and we'll trim the blue just like before. Just going to repeat that process. Wow, uh, we don't have to trim this one at all. So make sure you, you dry fit before you do any trimming. It's gonna fit just as is. Yay! Different, huh? Okay, so now we're going to close everything and we're going to embellish this. So I have, I this is based on a bundle, so I have everything. Um, this is a little swirl in the die cuts. We're going to use it right here. And then this was a stamp. I cut the white border off because it was too strong looking. And then this is just cut from the... Uh, this blue paper, I just created a rectangle around it. 
and I just like the way this swirl looks. So I'm going to decide if I want it up or down. Or where I want the big side. <clears throat> you know what? I looked at this last night and this looked better last night. This looks too bright now. Oh, that's why. I must have been looking at it on this side. I like it better on this side. There's a stronger pattern. It actually makes this pink look better. Hmm. I'm not sure. Where's my goodie trays? goodies. Oh, this is kind of fun too. The paintbrush. So these are the die cuts. This is the tags and frames. And that, oh, I like this. Maybe this looks better. Yeah, because this is so modern looking and this just kind of goes more with Monet, although I don't think that's Monet. I think it's De Gaulle, De Gan, De something. <laughs> so let's see. What else do I have? Yeah, there's another stamp that's two. It needs a word. Okay, so I am going to use this. I'm going to put it here. There's the create. I'm going to leave this with this, but I don't think that's what I'm going to use. What I do think I'm going to do is make a stamp. So this collection comes with a stamp set, and I'm going to look at that real quick and see if there's a stamp that I you know, would lean towards. Providing I can find what I did with it. What did I do with the stamps? I thought they were on one of these trays. And then, of course, we have, uh, because I have the 12 by 12 and the 8 by 8 I have all these cut-aparts, the larger um, and smaller um, journaling cards. Hmm, I don't know what I did with the stamps. Ah, I don't know. Anyways, um, I do like this, though, so we're going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to uh, throw some ink on that and... Uh, Put that down on the edge and then I'll probably come back and do a little something else. I just don't know what yet. And that is pretty much done for page one. And I like it. I think it's interesting on the inside. Um, and I may come back and, and do another, flip that open and um, flip it over. Put a different pattern on it so there's not so much orange showing through here. I think it'll look a lot better. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's really going to be a photo. That looks pretty. I like that flourish. So I'll come back to that. We'll do something interesting, I promise. I don't like that. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. And so I'll come back and, and uh, focus on covering these after I finish the album and know for sure what I have left. But as you can see, that calms things down quite a bit just by not having that uh, orange all the way through. Okay, now for those of you that just want to do mats and they you don't want to do the frames, we're done. For those of you that want to know what I did and how I did the frames, I'm going to show you. There's a couple of different ways. But the bottom one, uh, because I wanted it to be see-through, I wound up, um, you wind up cutting 
Oh, I'll do this. So I want the frame to be five eighths. I want the frame to be five eighths wide, which is a little bit, which is one eighth bigger than. Um, I don't know why I'm having trouble with my words today. Than the half inch that we normally score when we go around and score a half inch on almost everything. In this case, you're going to go. I have to think. Sorry. We're going to go five eighths. So there's four and there's five. Five eighths. Okay. Now I am going to fold that score line under, place it back in my trimmer, and I want this to be a six inch frame. So I'm going to score again right here at six inches. And then I'm going to put it in the trimmer and trim it at six and three quarters. Okay, so now I've got not three quarters. I should have been six and five eighths, not three quarters. Sorry. That matters because you want the frame to be the same size. So six. We scored at six, and then we should trim at five eighths. So it's a little bit too big. So we trim that. So now there's a five eighths and five eighths and five eighths. So I'll go ahead and fold the four. Okay, down. Now this is the length wise, and this is nope, this is the length, and this is going to be the height. So now we have to figure out. We want to score it at four. So from um, from this score line to this score line is six inches, right? The total is seven and a quarter. So this is seven and a quarter. You're going to score at five eighths, and then you're going to score again at six and five eighths. Okay. that's those two lines. That's what's going to be the front of the frame, six inches. Now we need to work on the height. So we're going to turn it, we're going to fold this in, and then we're going to come to four inches. It would have been four and five eighths otherwise, four inches, okay. and that's going to be the bottom of the frame. So now I want to add five eighths here and trim it. So, at the end of the day, five and a quarter. We're going to trim at five and a quarter. Five and Again, the other way is to cut all this out, and it's really easy because you just simply follow the frame itself. I always lay my ruler in. Uh, so that I don't accidentally cut the frame and then do that. So it'll be um, completely uh, thorough or see-through. And then if you just want um, a frame like what I had done, you don't have to do this and cut it out. What you can do is the same thing. Do 5 8 inch strips and then just glue them together in a rectangle to create that um, geometric shape that we have here. And then the easiest... Um, least challenging is just two photo mats that are staggered slightly over one another. But I like that this pattern is coming through, that this is actually a window, a frame. Um, but 
so there's multiple options for you um, and your skill level. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll be back soon.